Good morning, Dallas Church. It is a good day to be gathered as the family of Jesus here and to lift up his name. So let's pray and continue worshiping together. Father God, we invite your spirit uh, to speak to us. Um, Jesus, we are grateful for the ways that you've worked in our lives to bring us to this moment today. And so we ask you to make something significant out of this. Draw us closer to you and help us be your people. And so it is in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, today we are continuing our series called Tales of the Kingdom, where we are learning about what Jesus taught his followers about what it means to be a good human. So the chairman of our elders today, Jeff Geiger, will be bringing a message on what it means to be a family. Um, and we also might get some surprises with that along the way. So um, I am going to be stationed in the lobby. And if you are new, um, I have a gift that I would love to give you. So make sure you stop by, see me, say hi. And with that, let's keep worshiping. Well, we're going to learn a new song today. And if you've heard of the Lord's Prayer or you know the words, then you know the lyrics to the song. So let's sing it out. Let's uh, sing it together. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth and in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth and in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sinned against us, forgive them and lead us not into temptation, deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come, Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day a daily bread, forgive us, forgive us, as we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Forgive them, and lead us not into temptation, to live It's yours, all yours, all yours, all yours, the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours, all yours, all yours, all yours, forever and ever, the kingdom is yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours. Forever and ever, the kingdom is yours. Father, let your will be come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart.
what is your family's origin story? Do I have any Yellowstone series fans in the room? Anybody? I'm a big Yellowstone junkie. Anybody else out there? Okay, got a few of you guys reluctantly, right? Well, if you know anything about the Yellowstone uh, series on what Paramount and Peacock, you, it's kind of tricky to find the, the current season or the, or the back ones if you're trying to go back and watch through the whole series. But if you know anything about the, the Yellowstone story, you know about the Dutton family, right? And in the, in the series, uh, Kevin Costner plays the, uh, the head of the Dutton family in kind of modern times. Well, the Dutton family and the whole Yellowstone thing, it's got an origin story too, right? So maybe you've dug back and you've watched 1883. Okay, so that's with uh, Tim McGraw, Faith Hill, um, uh, Sam Shepard, I think he's in there. And um, that's the story of, of how the family made their first migration over into Montana to where the kind of present day Yellowstone sits and all the hardship and struggle, struggle and violence and everything they went through. Or maybe you took it a step further, you'd watched Yellowstone, you covered 1883, and you even jumped into 1923. So that's the next part of the story for the family. And that stars uh, Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren. And the violence and the double crossing and everything continues. <laughs> this is quite the family. Ho hopefully your family's story is much less violent. And there aren't canyons where you, you throw dead people and stuff. <laughs> but um, we all have a story. We all have an origin. And it's part of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, my name is Jeff Geiger. A little bit about my story. Um, I've been married for over 29 years now to my, my wife, Tina. Uh, we have two grown kids, and I have a fantastic son-in-law. I like to joke with my daughter that I think I like my son-in-law better than her now. So, <laughs> But we're very, we're very blessed. We have a new puppy. We have a little mini uh, golden doodle. She's about 19 pounds of, of fight. Uh, Piper is her name, so she's invaded our life in the last year or so, so that's pretty great. Um, to tell you a little bit about, about my origin story with my family, so who has done a Ancestry or a 23andMe kind of a research thing on your, on your clan? Okay, some of you guys have. My mom got a lot of us into this a few years ago, and she did all this research, and I've done some too. But what she found on uh, my dad's side of the family with our Geiger history is we can go back to about 1735 with my eighth grandfather ago, uh, Johann. Uh, he was in Baden, Germany. And we can trace the family over the last, you know, what's it been, 300 years almost. And it's interesting, a, a couple of little quick highlights. So uh, about three grandfathers later after Johann in 1735, in around 1820, we believe, a move was made to Canada. So they, they set across the ocean. They ended up in the area that's kind of near Toronto, Ontario now, for a number of years. Then in around 1850 or 60, another grandfather went from Canada into Michigan. And there was a, a stretch in Michigan for the family for about 30 years-ish or so. And then in uh, 17, no, 1896, sorry, my great-great-grandfather William moved from Michigan to Los Angeles and started the Southern California uh, time and origin of my family. Well, then a couple generations later, my grandfather, Elmer, was in World War II. He met a young lady from Garden Home, Kansas, named Marie. And they were married. And then soon after the war, uh, my dad, Gary, was born in Kansas. And then within just about, about two or three years, uh, they decided to make the move back to Southern California. So they came back over into the Los Angeles area where my dad really grew up and went to high school and everything. That continued. Uh, I was born in 1970 in San Luis Obispo, California, kind of central California coast. My dad was going to Cal Poly for college in those days to be an engineer. And then my folks made the next kind of move or change in the family storyline when they moved us to Oregon uh, when I was four. 
So we've been, we've really been here in Oregon for almost 50 years, since 1974. So that's a little bit about my, my story, my background. What about you? What is your story? What are those moves where someone got married or someone went in the military or someone took a leap of faith and, and, and shot across the country or maybe across the globe to, to establish themselves and maybe the generations to come? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because today, we're going we're gonna to get into Matthew 19. We're going to hear from Jesus more of his words about, about relationship. We're going to talk about divorce and how that affects families. But more than anything, we're going to look at what does Jesus think of a family? How does he see a family story? And how does he want to be involved in that? And I've got some help today. I've asked three super brave people to jump up here toward the end of the sermon and tell you some of their story. And I think it might really encourage you. We did this during first service. We're going to do it now, too. So it's going to be great. But before we get there, uh, before we get into God's Word, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love families. And you love to hear our story, God. You're the one writing that story. God, open our hearts and our minds today as we consider Jesus' words. As we hear a little bit about family and what that means from some people within our church body. Help us to grow closer together today, Jesus, in your mighty name. Amen. Okay, so if you have a device, if you want to go to uh, Matthew chapter 19 and get ready, uh, we are going through the book of Matthew this year at Dallas Church. So recently, you've heard from uh, people like Bob Sloan and David Bessenbacher uh, about some of the different teachings of Jesus uh, through this book of Matthew chapter 17 and 18. Last week, we heard from Pastor Andrew, who took us through a good chunk of Matthew 18. And who was here last week? Who was here last week? All right, a lot of you guys were here. Good job. Um, do you remember what Pastor Andrew left us with? Do you remember his kind of his mantra? Uh, does anybody remember? Any hands? Any guesses? Some vague ideas. Forgiveness. Somebody said forgiveness, right? Yeah, and, and Andrew's big, big message to us, that takeaway that day. Oh, here, there it is. Jim and, uh, and Derek helped. Yeah, is be forgiven because you are forgiven. Whoa, got us, got us thinking, didn't it? So good job, Pastor Andrew. Now, if you missed that, that sermon from last week or one of the earlier ones, or maybe you want to go back and listen uh, to some of the kind of the greatest hits from Pastor Ben or uh, from our different uh, preaching team over the years, go to our DallasChurch.org website. You can click on there. We've got a whole bunch of sermons on there. We've got Andrews from last week. We've got stuff from last year. I, we even have some from, gosh, about, about three plus years ago on the art of neighboring. That was really a great series around here that, that really inspired a lot of us. So uh, that's there. It's a good resource. If you want to go back and, and listen to some of the, the good messages, uh, it's a great way to get to know Dallas Church, too. So let's get into Matthew. Matthew 19. And starting in verse 1, Jesus is talking about divorce. When Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and he went into the region of Judea to the other side of the Jordan. Large crowds followed him and he healed them there. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. Boy, those Pharisees, they were always around, weren't they? Trying to trap Jesus and test him and throw a crazy question at him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read, he replied, that in the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, for this reason a man will leave his father and his mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together let no one separate. Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. But it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another woman commits adultery. The disciples said to him, if this is the situation between a husband and a wife, is it better just not to marry? Jesus replied, not everyone can accept this word but only those to whom it has been given. Hmm. A, lot, a lot there. And divorce is complex, isn't it? Even the Pharisees, these 
very educated religious teachers and leaders of the day, the, the leaders of the Jewish church in that time, they disagreed about when exactly it was okay to get divorced. Some uh, literally sided with Jesus with his words here that said, it's only in the case of adultery, when, when someone's been unfaithful, that a divorce can be granted by the courts. Others said, no, there are actually lots of reasons to get divorced. Even if your spouse burnt the toast, or ruined dinner, or you found someone more attractive. From some of the commentaries in this section, it talks a lot about verse 9, where Jesus is talking about that future marriages would be invalid unless the reason for the divorce was adultery, was infidelity, right? But that statement by Jesus may well have been hyperbolic. He may, he may have been using hyperbole rather than being literal. The reason that Jesus might have used hyperbole there is to make his point forcefully, to get our attention when it comes to marriage and taking a vow and making a covenant and how serious that is. Also, in, in that time during the Jewish culture, because men could divorce women very easily, you know, it was, it was a really one-sided system as far as the courts saw things. So this statement by Jesus that it would only be okay to get divorced in, in the event of an adultery situation, that's, he actually may have been protecting married women by saying that. Because married women and, and unmarried women had very little economic strength in standing. And, and so that may have been part of Jesus' intent there too. Well, what can you and I say about all this? Marriage is hard. Divorce is difficult. And it happens. Now, would God's best, not just from this section of Scripture, but other places in the Bible, would God's best for us be that in marriage, we're one and done? You know, that we find that one person, that we get married to make that, make that covenant vow, and that we never look back? Yes. Yes, wouldn't that be wonderful? Wouldn't that be for the best? And you know what? We celebrate marriage around Dallas Church. We have some, some long-time marriages uh, of 40, 50, 60 years represented in our church family. And that's a beautiful thing. There's so much blessing and there's so much teaching and inspiration that the rest of us can take from a marriage like that. But what about the rest of us? Are we just going to be left out in the cold? Well, like many of you, divorce has touched my life. So uh, my dad, Gary, was killed in a car accident on my seventh birthday. Uh, my brother, Matt, was three. My mom was 28. Uh, a little bit later, she remarried uh, just for a very short time and had my brother, Adam. So I actually have a half-brother. Uh, for a few years, it was just my mom and the three boys. And then when I was almost 13, uh, she remarried my stepdad and was with him until my youngest brother left for college, and then they got divorced. And then she remarried again. So I've had uh, a total of three stepdads. Uh, I have a half-brother. Um, the blessing of my current stepdad is uh, he and he, his name's Doug, and he and my mom are great. They're going to celebrate their 20th anniversary next month. So that's a, that's a beautiful thing, and he's such a blessing to our family. But divorce has touched my life. What, what about you? You know, have you been uh, divorced yourself? Have your parents? Have your grown kids? Are you part of a blended family? Or maybe you're part of a blended family that got blended a little bit more. <laughs> that happens a lot, doesn't it? And I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but, but just show of hands, I want you to kind of see what divorce means you know, within a, a group of people like this. Raise your hand in, in, here in a second. How many of you have been through a divorce, your parents were divorced, or maybe your grown kids were divorced? Wow. Yeah. It's, it's a reality of where we live, isn't it? And see, I think Jesus knew that for so many of us and so many of our family's stories, things were going to get complicated, weren't they? The messy circumstances of our lives would put us in places that we never imagined. Nobody says, I do, and thinks, well, I'll just get divorced. 
you know, but that's, that's where things can go sometimes. And do you think for one second that the Lord Jesus would say to you and I, and people that have been touched by divorce especially, well, you know what? Your story is just too messed up. You've made too many bad choices. I don't have any room for you in my kingdom. No way. Not our Lord. Not the Jesus that we follow. I love as uh, Matthew 19 continues, if you'd read with me, Matthew 19, 13. Jesus kind of turns the focus of family to this. Then children were brought to him that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people, but Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and went away. And I like too what uh, Mark's account, and you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, many times they're uh, writing about the same stories, you know, where they were with Jesus and witnessed a lot of these, these interactions. Here's Mark's uh, take on uh, this story about Jesus and the children. In Mark chapter 10, it says, And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. I've got another TV series question for you. How many of you guys have seen some of The Chosen? Has anybody seen some of The Chosen series? I love the way that The, the Chosen portrays Jesus. We see so many times when Jesus is right down with little children, right at their level interacting with them, touching them, teaching them, uh, just spending time valuing them, showing them how important that they are to him. Isn't that a beautiful picture of who Jesus is? I, I encourage you, if you haven't checked out that series, um, I think there's three seasons now. Do that. Get my password back here. Um, Jesus was passionate about including children. And he even became angry with the disciples in that, uh, especially in Mark's account there, didn't he? He said he was indignant. So he was very angry, super annoyed that the disciples were trying to turn these people back. He said, no, let the children come to me. He wanted to be near them. He wanted them to be included. And you know, at Dallas Church, kids are a big deal to us. We really value them. That's why we, we put so much of our resources and our focus on a great kids program. Right now we've got kids from uh, well, babies up to about fifth, sixth grade being taught who Jesus is, learning to value the, the kingdom of God and what it means to be a follower. They're, they're up in our, our back classrooms right now with our awesome volunteers learning about that. But that's, that's a big thing for us. It always has been for our 15, 16 years of, of being a church. We also... Love it when you want to bring your kids in here. You know, when they want to come to, to, to big church and be in the sanctuary with us. And does that mean that once in a while we might have a noisy little person or something? Uh, that's okay. Bring them in. Because you know what? At Dallas Church, we value families. We think when families worship together and, and sing together and learn God's word together and have fellowship together in the bigger, the bigger church, that amazing things happen, that God inter interweaves those relationships with us and each other. So kids are a, a big, big deal around here. And you know, at Dallas Church, something else I appreciate is we welcome everybody, whether you're divorced, you've been married for 70 years, uh, or, or you don't know anything about Jesus, and you are just checking this thing out. And if that's you, if you, if you haven't made a decision yet to maybe follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm so glad you're here. Check, check this church out. Consider some of the scripture and the teaching that, that, that we bring forward. See how we treat each other. Take a good look at us. And, and ask yourself, you know, is that some place that I might want to plug in? Is that some place I might want to call family, right? At Dallas Church, we don't beat people up who've gone through a divorce. In fact, we have people on our staff who have been divorced and people in leadership positions here that have gone through a divorce. 
Every single one of us comes from a family with a unique origin story. What if you invited someone here in the church over for dinner and just asked them, what's your family origin story? I think that'd be a really memorable night that you would have with them, don't you? You'd probably learn some amazing things. Well, to give you a little bit of an idea of how that might play out, I'm going to ask my, my three brave souls to come on up. So, Lara, uh, Andrew, and Heidi, would you guys come up? We're going to get to know your family a little bit and your story. And, Lara, we're going to start with you here in a second. So I've asked, uh, I've asked these guys if they would share a little bit about who they are and then some questions about family. Um, I think you're going to uh, really enjoy this. We did this during first service, too. Um, Laura, we'll start with you. Uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Okay. So my name is Laura Lamora, and I was born in Oahu. We moved to Oregon when I was about nine years old. I grew up on a farm. Um, I grew up showing horses. Um, I've been married for almost 25 years now. I married my high school sweetheart, and um, I worked in long-term care for about 24 years. And just within the last year and a half, I was able, with the support of my husband and family, to um, be able to, I guess, become a retiree, so I just get to be at home now. And um, let's see, uh, something you may not know about me is uh, recently um, I got into ax throwing and I love ax throwing. So. Watch out, <laughs> Andrew. I don't know if I could beat that. Um, well, if we haven't met, my name is Andrew Franklin. Um, me and my wife, Bobby, have been coming here for a couple years now. Um, uh, for the last three years, I was an enforcement deputy with the Anhill County Sheriff's Office. My wife is a nurse at Salem Hospital. Um, so we both have the joy of working shift work for years now um, and all the challenges that entails. Um, we've got an awesome almost two and a half year old son who's upstairs and we're expecting our first daughter at the end of August. Um, been married for about five years now and happy to be here. And Heidi. I'm Heidi Christensen. I grew up in Portland, Oregon. Lived there until I went to OSU and I got a job with the Bureau of Land Management. And so I've been in the Salem, Corvallis, Dallas area ever since. Um, at the BLM, I'm a botanist, so I look for special plants and invasive plants and manage them accordingly for our project areas. It's really fun. I just get to climb through the woods and look at small, tiny things for the most part. Um, I met my husband 12 years ago, and we got married 11 years ago. So that's when I moved to Dallas, and I got a stepson. Uh, he was nine when we met, and uh, since then, my husband and I have had two kids. They're nine and seven as of today. My youngest birthday is today, so we've been having birthday parties all weekend long. But. <laughs> That's great. Heidi, we'll stay with you then. Uh, you started to talk about it there. Uh, what's your family like? So we have our three kids. Uh, our oldest is officially moved out, which we're very excited and proud of him for. Um, I live next door to my mother-in-law. She's amazing. I'm so blessed to have her. Uh, I am a child of divorce, so it's been, it's been interesting growing up and becoming a parent because I didn't, I don't feel like I had very good examples of parents. So like I said, blessed to have my mother-in-law. Um, so parenting is hard in my opinion. <laughs> like it's the biggest challenge of my life, but it has been great. My husband's family all lives in Dallas and I moved to Dallas and then my family has slowly followed me to Dallas. <laughs> my sister and her family have moved. My uh, mother and grandmother have now moved. So I've only got one, one other sibling that's still out there wandering around. But um, <laughs> I've got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but I would also add that I have, we have a really strong friend group that are all pseudo aunts and uncles to my kids that we camp with, that we play with, that we vacation with. And so I would say more than my immediate family is, is our extended group that we love. That's great. Okay, Andrew, how about you? What's your family like? 
Uh, well, I kind of skipped ahead and talked a little bit about that beforehand, but um, I guess uh, growing up, my parents are still together. They were celebrating their 30th anniversary this year in June, um, or did celebrate it in June. Um, we've been married for about five years and hoping to get at least that far. Um, my wife, I don't I really want to speak for her, but, but her family is a little bit more on the broken side. Um, and on, on my side, my parents are still together, but um, some of their, my dad's siblings um, split up, his parents split up. Mm. Um, so it's, it's not a direct line, but it's, it's there still in the family as I'm sure just about everybody's experience is. Um, but as for, as for my own, as for our own family, we're, we're happy to be with each other. And even, even when we're not, we still are. And <laughs> that's just what we're gonna keep doing. That's great. And uh, Laura. Okay. Um, well, I'm the youngest of three. Um, my mom lives over in Newport, and her and my dad were married for a little over 30 years before my dad, about 10 years ago, went to be with the Lord. And um, my sister lives over in Newport. Uh, my brother lives up in the Portland area. And my husband and I have one son, um, Trevor. And yeah, no, we're a very close family. We enjoy doing a lot of things together, and um, yeah. That's great. And we'll stay, we'll stay with you, Laura. Let's go to our next question. Um, what is the Dallas Church family like? With that, um, well, we came to the Dallas Church um, when you were meeting in the high school. It was when we first came to Dallas Church, and it was when we had actually uh, had just moved to Newport, and um, we're trying to find a new church, and then we had a small group with Jeff. Um, Dallas Church, um, just, you know, you build friendships, um, those friendships that you have the same kind of mission in life, and you get to share your ups and downs, and just, you know, friendships and people being there for you. That's great. Andrew? Um, well, really, since since coming here, the, the just the first couple of times we started showing up, um, we were we were welcomed really quickly. Um, I think that's a, the experience of a lot of people that have started coming here um, recently. Um, from just being talked to on Sunday mornings um, to being quickly invited to a small group where we build friendships that are that are lasting even on the off season when small groups aren't taking place, um, we're still seeing those people. We're still connecting with them. Um, yeah, just the the community and the and the family relationships that you build um, are kind of unique to to the church and probably unique to this one. I would say. Thanks, Heidi. Um, my husband was at the church when it was in the high school or in the school at one point, um, but we started coming together when. Um, my son Elliot was an infant, and so we have been involved with the kids' church. And uh, to us, like the kids' church has just been a huge support. Because I don't know about anybody else, but you tell something to your child, and they do not listen <laughs> until somebody else says it. <laughs> so uh, we try to, like, you know, read the Bible and talk about stories, but they, I feel like they just soak up more coming from somebody else. And so uh, having that extra support, that uh, extra input um, regarding like Christ and Jesus just is so helpful. Like it's such a good experience for our kids. Um, and then just, you know, getting to hear all the different perspectives from all of the different pastors is always so nice to like kind of get that variety of input, so. Andrew, um, yeah, and, uh, oh no, you guys are coming, okay, so sorry, last question, last question, you guys, you guys are doing great, I, I need to stay on task here too, so final question, um, how do you think Jesus looks at a family, Heidi? I think Jesus looks at it as the family unit, you know, that you're supposed to take care of yourself, but I also think it's your community, it's those around you that um, you spend your time and put your energy into. So it, it's more than just your blood. It's, it's those around you and those that you spend time with is, is who you need to care for. That's great. 
So something that, that me and my wife have talked about quite a few times and just my my interpretation of how family is and how and how um, I think Jesus would view the family is I think it's a representation of, of his relationship with with each of us and his relationship with the church where he's um, you know the forgiveness of sins is just overreaching and and overpowering and it 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 beats it trumps anything that you've you've done in your past um, as far as as far as God's concerned um, and I think that that the closer the closer you can get to that in your in your family life, um, just the the better off you'll be. Um, and and family is something that that's that's where I've been able to find that is that unconditional um, as close to that unconditional love as you can get outside of your relationship with 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 Christ. Um, and just the the constancy of it is something that um, I don't think you can really find anywhere else. Laura. Um, I just I think family is was meant to be like one of God's masterpieces of um, just the purpose and design of family it was just beautiful to have that unconditional love, that trust, that belonging, and um, you know usually that starts off as your biological family but then moves into your church family and then of course friends that become like family to you. That's great. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, thank you so much, Heidi, Andrew, Laura. I'm going to let you guys uh, go and bring the band back up. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and, uh, and move into a time of communion as uh, Ryan and, and his team come up. Uh, this is our chance as a church family to uh, come to the table and remember what Jesus did at the cross for us to take the uh, container that's got the wafer and the juice uh, to represent Jesus' body and blood shed for you and I, paying for our sins, making it possible for us to be in relationship with the Lord of the universe. We're gonna come forward and do that. Um, if you are a member of Dallas Church, we ask that you would uh, support the church financially. This is where we give, where we tithe. There's giving boxes to do that right up here. You can also do that online. You can go to dallaschurch.org uh, or give through our church center app. And thank you for your, your faithful giving. Uh, but let me pray, and uh, we'll, as the songs go, uh, we'll have you, uh, invite you to come up and take communion together. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you uh, for the way you see us. Lord, you know each family's story. You know where we're going. You know the end of the story too, God, and, and how it all, it all winds up. God, help us to trust you in that. Uh, to look for you uh, in the circumstances of where our family sits now and where we want to go uh, together as an individual family, as a, a family of, of a collection of believers at Dallas Church. Lord, you're so much bigger than our circumstances. You see us for who we are. You, after all, you made us and you love us so much. So help us to come forward in that spirit now as we take communion with you, as we uh, uh, bring all of our, our cares and our worries to your table. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. fall sure I've got nothing new how could I express all my gratitude I could sing these songs as I often do Every song must end, and you never do. So I throw my hand to praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. for a king except for 
will be thrown into the midst of the sea. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is well. Trust in Him, the ways of wind still know His name. So let go, my soul, and trust in Him, the ways of wind. much for joining us today and being a church family. I want to invite all of us uh, to go live out that identity as a family. And then one of the cool things about church family is you can always pick up more family members. So uh, next week we are kicking off. We're going to do two weekends basically back to back that are some of the biggest outreach things that our church will do um, in the year because we have a great opportunity. We will be walking with the parade next Saturday. And so I just would, this is the open invitation. As many people as we can get um, with our Dallas Church t-shirts on, having a great time, um, showing our family how cool it is to be Dallas Church. And then the next week, um, we will do something very different for church on a Sunday um, because we're going to throw a block party for our whole community. And so um, we will have an 
acoustic, um, kind of low-key worship service at 9 o'clock from 9 to 9.30, and then after that, it's party time. So if you're interested in bringing somebody or helping out with that, um, please do. With that, let's go be the church. Through it all.